What's up guys, it's Ozzy, and this guy right here has been my main computer for 24 hours. By popular demand, this video is basically an extension of my single core i3 video where I replaced my R7-1700 with an i3 that had a core disabled and all of its hyper-threading disabled. This time though, I take it a few steps further. I didn't just replace the CPU, I replaced the entire system with this guy. So more than one component was replaced here. Secondly, I used an authentic single core CPU, the Athon XP 1500 Plus, instead of taking an i3 and then disabling some cores. So in the case that you guys don't know what my main rig is, I actually have him or her right here. Whew. Big guy. It has a Ryzen R7 1700, overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory at 2933, running in dual channel, it has five terabytes of storage space and then a 120 gigabyte SSD. I just upgraded the storage. And finally, the video card is an RX 480, eight gigabyte reference. Now this guy right here is a huge difference from this guy, which I replaced him with for 24 hours. It has the Athon XP 1500 Plus, a single core CPU. It has 1.5 gigabytes of DDR memory. It has 20 gigabytes of IDE hard drive space and it's running a Geoforce MX440 AGP video card. If you guys have been around the channel for a little bit over a year, then you might notice this PC already. The case itself is with cardboard that I made a while back and I actually have a video on it. And then I just plastic dipped the edges very, very poorly. And then the components inside are actually from my $45 PC. I also have a video on that, so you can check that out if you want. But yeah, I've used this PC before, so I kind of already knew going into it how it would perform, but I decided to do a full on analysis. So this computer right here, and we'll just call him Plank for now. So Plank has a 32 bit CPU and it has Windows XP. So that means that it's not gonna be compatible with a lot of modern software. So I did have to compromise a lot when I was using this guy for the past 24 hours. So there are 32 bit versions of seven, eight, 8.1 and 10. Eight and 8.1 ran terribly on this guy. So I didn't even bother with 10. And Windows seven ran better than I expected, but it still used a lot more resources than XP did. So I decided to stick with XP for Plank. And the cherry on top is that the GPU in Plank actually only supports up to DirectX 7. So that already limits me to games uh, predating 2008. I can't play any modern titles on here that I would usually play or try to play if I had the opportunity, but I did get some really good results gaming out of this. So while I did have a lot of limitations, I definitely try to make the best of the situation, but here it is, my experience using a 2001 $45 PC for 24 hours. All right guys, so this is where all the magic happens. This is the setup with the 2001 PC and the PC is under the table with the rest of the setup obviously up here. This guy right here, this webcam, I'm not sure if it's in the frame, but this is my ghetto solution to a screen recorder. It's a very old PC, so any kind of modern screen recorder takes a lot of resources and even older ones take up a lot of resources. So I'm gonna be recording this separately so you guys can get a better view of the screen because I don't think the camera uh, on top of the tripod over there will give you a very clear picture. All right guys, so I'm in the computer right now and the first thing that I noticed when I turned on the computer and I noticed this yesterday as well when I was using it is how freaking loud it is compared to my R7-1700 computer. And I'm not even stocking this thing up with fans. I have a a cooler which I believe is aftermarket it's not even stock and then I have one 120 millimeter case fan and just with those two alone it's very very loud compared to my other gaming rig and I'll give you guys a mic test I believe I already took one but I'll give you guys one just so you can see how freaking loud this thing is But other than that, boot up time from the time I turned on the computer to the time that the little loading icons, uh, hourglass stopped, was about a minute, uh, give or take a couple of seconds. So much, much slower than my other computer, but you know, I expected that. It has an IDE hard drive as opposed to the SSD that I use for my operating system. What we're actually going to do is start some very light web browsing, and I'm gonna be using Firefox. Now, back in 2002 and 2003, when this computer could have been built, uh, Internet Explorer was the most popular web browser, hands down. It was like 95% of users who had a personal computer use Internet Explorer as their main browser. The issue with Internet Explorer, as many of you know, is that it's slow. And so Firefox version 48, the latest version that uh, supports 32-bit CPUs and Windows XP is much, much quicker. And in all honesty, I would rather use that than try to emulate um, how things were 
15 years ago. So that's what I'm gonna be using for today. I'm going to look up a page that doesn't have a lot of multimedia on it so we can see how the single core processor works with sites like those. And so I'm actually gonna look up a review from TechSpot of the current GPU that I have. As you can see, I already looked it up. MX440, not tech power up, tech spot. So there are a couple of ads and pictures on the side, but it's, it's nothing that's too intense for it to handle. What you might notice is that scrolling itself is very laggy, and I'm not sure if that's because of the CPU or because of the video card or a combination of both, but scrolling is not very smooth at all. Right now, it's, it's fine. Like, I can deal with uh, sluggish, um, sluggish scrolling. What I can't deal with though is when something doesn't respond. And then going from page to page, it's it's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing that's too intensive here for uh, the single core Athlon. But yeah, web browsing, single tab web browsing, solid for me. Scrolling, kind of laggy, but you know, I can deal with that. I can definitely deal with that. So now what I want to do is add some multimedia to the mix. So I'm going to go to a very popular site that I frequent. Uh, reddit.com which has a ton of images and stuff the scrolling is a lot laggier than before but like I mentioned twice I believe already I can deal with laggy scrolling so load it up fairly quickly that was fine um, scrolling again is laggy and I can see some screen tearing here but it's not too noticeable so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a bigger image I'm actually going to go to a subreddit which is known for super nice images earth porn and if you guys are not a part of the community definitely check it out awesome subreddit great pictures beautiful scenery so right here with the preview the lagging in the scrolling is becoming kind of unbearable and you can see that there is a lot of screen tearing so that's how it handles larger images not exactly large images images but larger images and so now I'm gonna go to YouTube and we're gonna stream a video. All right, so I have one of my most recent videos up right now, and I'm gonna see what YouTube auto qualities, I guess, the video to, because as far as I know, the algorithm for that is a combination of your internet speed and your computer processing power. It's mostly your internet speed if you're using a modern computer because any computer made in the last 10 years will be able to handle 480p or higher streaming. Now, this computer, definitely cannot handle 480p or higher streaming because as you can see if the bar will show up it auto to 144p which is the absolute lowest that you can go and even at the very lowest quality setting the video is still pretty choppy and unwatchable streaming is pretty much out of the question for now but i can still web browse uh, without watching videos that's fine i can do that for a couple of hours all right guys so before i move on to the next segment which is going to be multitasking i actually want to check really quickly uh to see if video playback is possible with the downloaded content as many of you know if you are part of my discord channel then you know that i've been watching avatar um a lot lately and so i'm just gonna see if i am able to properly watch this clip it's full hd i don't have high hopes and it looks like my hopes are reality because it's it's not very it's not smooth at all actually it's it's also unwatchable so it looks like downloaded content as well as streamed content just are out of the question for this cpu so unfortunately anyway. So I found this very interesting. I ended up converting the core video, the fight, from MP4 to AVI, and it runs just fine with AVI. Now, I'm not sure if it's still running at 1080p. I, I don't think it is because I compressed it with an online converter, but it's working just fine. So it could be that the MP4 codec just isn't working properly, even though I've installed it and triple checked it several times. Um, but it's working fine with AVI, so it looks like this processor can definitely handle it. Just maybe MP4, it might have an issue with that because it's a newer codec. So the next thing that I'm gonna be testing is multitasking. And just as a disclaimer, and this kind of goes without saying if you've watched the video up to this point, uh, you've seen that this computer doesn't handle a lot of content very well. So I'm not gonna throw anything super heavy at it. I'm gonna try to keep my expectations reasonable. I'm gonna be opening Facebook and I'm gonna be chatting with a friend and I'm gonna have a Google Docs open as well as an article open and pretending that I'm doing some kind of a work on it. Just so you guys can see how well it handles all of that. Right off the bat, I can already tell you that there is huge delay with Facebook Messenger. Okay, so again, I can tell you that there is huge delay. So I've, I've already written 
more than, see, it just, it just showed up right now. So multitasking, even when it, if it's, if it's light multitasking and I say this is light because I really just have, um, Google docs open, um, a tab of an article and a Facebook messenger open, but it's still lagging behind in most things. Now, again, it's not locking up, but it is lagging behind. So the input lag is definitely there. So if you're gonna be using the computer for multitasking with a lot of media, then you're not gonna get very far. But if you're gonna be using the computer and doing some basic web browsing without a lot of multimedia, or if you're just gonna be using the programs that you have installed on your computer, then it works pretty well in all honesty. So right here I'm web browsing and I have a couple of tabs open, but it's nothing too crazy. And I also just downloaded .NET Framework, which I'm going to install. And at the same time, I also have control panel and my downloads tabs open and I just installed some software. So even with all of this stuff on here, it's still not really bogged down. I do get that occasional input lag or delay when switching and I still get issues when scrolling. Again, the frames per second are not the highest, but it's very, very doable. But we're gonna move on from that and we're gonna go to something that I'm the most interested in because I haven't tested it yet and that is content creation, specifically video editing. So on my main computer, the R7-1700 rig, I edit and render all of my videos using Sony Vegas Pro 12. Now Vegas Pro 12 would obviously not run on this computer, so instead I got the next best thing, Sony Vegas Pro 4.0. It ended up that Vegas 4.0 did not work very well with .mov files, even after installing QuickTime Player. It also doesn't want to work with MP4 files, which I understand because um, I think MP4 came after Vegas 4.0 was created, and it says it only uses MP2 files as the highest. So instead, I am using WMV files, which I know for sure will run, will run on Sony Vegas. So let's see how far we can get with uh, video creation and video editing on the sky. So it looks like any kind of preview in the preview screen is going to be laggy. Even at the very lowest, the draft auto, it's still very, very laggy. To keep things simple, short, and sweet, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add one simple effect, maybe some color correction, and then I'm going to add uh, some text. And then we're going to render it and we're going to see how well the sky does when it comes to video editing and rendering. All right guys, so I'm pretty much done editing for now and I'm actually very surprised with how fluid the editing was. Um, it didn't lock up at all and it worked a lot better than I anticipated. Now, it definitely could be smoother. There are some things that I wish would change, but for the most part, um, it's working just fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna render this video and then I'm gonna see how long it takes. Hopefully it lets me render. As you can see, it took about 18 minutes to render a 25 second clip with a few effects here and there, and about five, four to five video tracks and one audio track. So if I were to render a 1080p 10 minute clip, which is pretty standard for my channel, that's about the duration of videos and the quality, it would take 432 minutes, assuming perfect linear scaling. That is about 7.2 hours. So that basically means that if you start running your clip and then you go to bed, it would probably be done by the time you wake up. Again, with perfect linear scaling, so about seven hours or so to render a 1080p 10 minute clip on this PC. All right guys, so this is the last part of the video and I changed my shirt because I just came back from work. So it's a brand new day from all of the other video clips. But basically when I get back from work, I usually get on my computer, I unwind and I play a few games. And the games I play are generally Overwatch, uh, Player Unknown Battlegrounds, uh, Elder Scrolls Online, and Smite. So those four games. Now, I can tell you right now off the bat that none of those four games are gonna run on this computer and that's because of one big reason, the video card. The MX440 that I have installed in this computer supports DirectX 7 at the maximum and all of those games require at least DirectX 9 to run. So while I can't play those games, I can play a lot of other games that I have already installed and so we're gonna try and play those and see how they run. And yeah, let's go from there. First thing that we're gonna try out is Halo. I'm gonna change the settings because it's running really, really slowly right now, like 15, 10 to 15 FPS slowly. And it's probably gonna get worse in combat. So I'm gonna actually put it at 640 by 480. And we're gonna see how well that games. I don't even know what I'm shooting at half the time. They're like, uh, the, the gunshots are like yellow, like triangles on the rectangle, killing them with air. I mean, I'm basically an airbender right now, guys, I'm airbending them. But yeah, as you can see, um, 
CPU's running at 100%, GPU's running at 100% right now, so everything's pretty much maxed out. Now if I up the resolution, then the CPU actually drops to like as low as 30% usage and it's all the GPU. So it's definitely the, uh, the GPU that's holding everything back. If I had a stronger GPU, then I definitely think I would be able to run this at much, much higher settings. All right, so 800 by 600. Uh, shadows are off, uh, gamma doesn't really matter, and the view distance is closer to near, but I'm gonna draw it down even further. So I'm basically running this at the lowest settings possible, 800 by 600. Let's see how well it does. All right, so when I'm just walking around, so I'm just walking around right now, and it's around 20 to 25 FPS. Um, your crime has been reported. I have a knife, you can't kill me. But I'm probably gonna die with this. This guard is probably gonna kill me. Um, resist arrest. Goodbye. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably dead. I can't do anything with the dagger. I need to go inside before I die. I died. So sad. Um, yeah, let's, let's load it and let's try this one more time. So one of the weirdest experiences, and I tweeted about this earlier, was that when I was gaming on here, I got worse results a year later on the same games at the same settings than when I tested it with my $45 gaming PC back in June of 2016. Now, I don't really have an explanation to this as I tried to reinstall drivers, I tried to reinstall Windows XP, and I still got worse results, which is really odd because back then, uh, I definitely remember Halo being a lot smoother than when I tried it the past 24 hours. but. Um, I can't really explain the phenomenon, I'm not really sure what went on, but regardless, it was still playable and I still enjoyed it. So a big question that I asked myself after conducting this little experiment was, what did I learn? Well, quite a few things actually. First things first, technology and price to performance has drastically improved. So the Athon XP 1500 Plus debuted for $130 back in October of 2001. If you account for inflation, that's about 180 bucks today. That means that today, for the price of an Athon XP 15, 16 years ago, you can get yourself a four core, eight threaded CPU, the Ryzen R5 1400 or the 1500X, for the same price as a single core CPU 15 to 16 years ago. That's pretty insane. <laughs> Efficiency has also improved drastically as well. If we look just at the specifications of the Athon XP 1500 Plus, you'll see that it has a 1.75 V core, which is insane by today's standards, and about a 60 watt TDP. Now the Ryzen R5 series, which goes for around the same price, has at max a 1.55 V core, and it has about a 65 watt TDP. That is a huge difference in efficiency in over about 15, 16 years of time. Software has also changed dramatically. Sony Vegas 4.0, ran smoother than expected, as I noted earlier in the video, but if I ran Sony Vegas Pro 12, what I use right now on my main computer, on, well, on this guy, then I have my doubts as to whether or not it would actually open up in a timely fashion. Facebook Messenger also proves that these computers weren't made for heavy multimedia sites and social media platforms that take advantage of newer technologies such as HTML5, for example. When I used it in my 24 hours, it was kind of unbearable, especially when I had other applications running in the background. And then there are new video and audio standards like I noted in the video, such as MP4. It wasn't around back in 2001. So this computer, uh, especially with Sony Vegas 4.0, just couldn't run it because it wasn't there. And the one thing that I didn't expect is multitasking was actually possible uh, within reason, of course. Uh, web browsing multitasking was definitely heavier than I expected, but if you use regular applications, such as those that come with Windows, or if you use installed applications, then you can definitely multitask. You just had to keep a reasonable standard and perspective on this guy. And lastly, we have a new standard for speed. So we live in a time where data can come and go almost instantaneously after it's requested by the person. And computers are no exception to this matter. They are blazing fast, much quicker than they were 15, 16 years ago. Quicker and faster storage technology, more CPU cores and higher frequency, smaller nodes and better efficiency makes all of this possible. Now, someone else who wasn't three years old back in 2001 can correct me in the comments or let me know of their experience. But basically, you had to wait a little bit longer back then for things to load up. And I feel like because the hardware was slower, software had to be better optimized in order to get all the performance you can get out of the computer that you had at hand. With that being said, I don't believe that software is getting less and less optimized because I think we're always improving in the software department, but I do believe that companies can get by with crummier ports and crummier technology and they can still run fine and get a lot of sales because 
we have hardware that can be their saving grace. But that's it for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, then leave a like. And if you loved it, subscribe and share because I have more videos like this coming out in the near future. Also stick around. I'm planning on upgrading the camera to 4K and that's why I actually upgraded my storage to five terabytes. I got a new SD card. So I'm pretty much preparing to go into the world of higher pixels technology. Yeah, so I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.